The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. I'm Tommy O'Brien. Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We kick things off this morning with the S&Ps up 13 points, sitting right at 5,900 on the dot. We got the S&Ps, the NASDAQ, the Dow on pace for positive weeks. You're talking about six straight weeks of gains in these markets. We'll see if we can hold on to them throughout the Friday action. But right now, we got markets in positive territory with the S&Ps up by about a quarter percent. 5,900, NASDAQ 100, we're up by about six tenths percent, up 120 points, trading at 20,489. Dow sets a record with the S&P yesterday. We trail off a bit off that level right now. We're negative by 103 points, and you see the acceleration. We were in positive territory as recently as about 7 a.m. We've seen a little bit of a slide this morning. We got some earnings action going on that we will jump around to in a moment. We got the Russell up by half a percent, 2309 this morning. Bitcoin. Up $1,000, trading at 67910 How about crude with a 69 handle, 69.54? Testing the lows. We got that spike yesterday to 69.44. We're trading at 69.55. Gotta love cheap gas coming at you. And speaking of gotta love, how about that gold contract, man? Gold up $15 at 27.22. And we were up to 27.32, folks. You're talking about gold. Today, Friday, October 8th, never traded as high as it's traded before, folks. $2,722. You got an ounce of gold sitting at home. You got $2,722 sitting in that one ounce of the yellow precious metal. Pretty remarkable, the rally that we're talking about. Now, we got to talk about notes and bonds and the dollar if we're talking about gold. We go back to a short-term time frame. There's your 10-year. We're positive by five ticks. You see the volatility yesterday. We got some retail sales numbers, right? We got lower price and higher yield. Today, we're just right back to basically that first acceleration yesterday. You're talking about a 10-year yield right now. We're sitting at about 4.08%, 4.08, the yield on that 10-year. We jump over to the DXY, the dollar index. Excuse me, that's going to help gold for sure, right? We got the dollar. Now, this is intriguing when you look at right? And this is why I love going through the order that I go through here in terms of the markets, maybe some commodities. Then we go to notes and bonds, and then we see how that's driving the dollar action. All of them intercorrelated to the nth degree, as they would say. The 10-year spikes yesterday, and we're chopping around right here. The dollar has given it all back, okay? Now, this is your first identification of a pullback. Watch out for gold to the upside, folks, as in if we get a pullback in the dollar, which we're getting today, right? We're right back to actually that first acceleration prior to retail sales yesterday. You get the dollar off about eight pennies, okay? But boy, we have given back a dramatic amount of the gain that we had yesterday. And what are you off? You're off about 35 pennies from the highs yesterday. So what do we have? We have dollar weakness. And when you got dollar weakness, that is going to translate to a little bit of gold strength with gold making new all-time highs today as we speak. You got to love it, right? S&P's all-time highs. Dow, all-time highs. Gold, all-time highs. Gas stations, $3 a gallon. Not bad, to put it lightly. Speaking of not bad, how about those Netflix earnings, man? It's not stopping. Netflix, you're going to open up. $46. $46 for Netflix, man. And check it out. Netflix, uh, they had a lot of volatility priced in last night. You're looking at about a $36 move priced in in either direction for Netflix shares. And yeah, we're going to beat that and we're going to beat it to the upside this morning. We'll see if it holds. But Netflix delivers another remarkably strong quarter yet again. And check out this weekly, man. You talk about it. From 162. Now, we're going to open today right at that high that we had last week. OK, and that is an all time high of 736 and absolutely remarkable. Right. You look at this thing. You cascade from 700 to 160 dollars and change. And guess what? Just over two years later, we're right back at 733 this morning. And yeah, you put it back on a daily. 
And there you see the action. Now we haven't, the dailies do not include the action today. So you're going to get a day today that's going to have a green bar that goes from 687 and we're going to open, boom, right at the highs. And you're going to get one big green bar that's going to encapsulate all of these red bars that we've had for the last five days coming at you. And let's get into those Netflix numbers, man, because they are crushing it, for lack of a better term. Strong margins, robust growth, even as subscriber additions cool. You look at these numbers, though. My goodness, man. Netflix added more than 5 million subscribers in the 90 days during the quarter. Yeah. Now, they added 8.76 million the same period a year earlier. But look at this growth, man. It is remarkable here. Revenue, almost $10 billion, up 15%. Okay, they were supposed to come in at 9.73. They come in at 9.83. Net income rising 41 percent. How about that? Right. Revenue goes up 15 percent. Net income goes up 41 percent. You got to love that, man. One point eight five billion Just mammoth margins. You're almost talking about 20 percent margins on that business. And yeah, Netflix is going to be higher to say the least. Two hundred and eighty two point seven million subscribers a year ago to forty seven. That is just a remarkable growth. Now, they're adding a lot of the ad-supported tiers, right? And I look at this number, folks. I'll tell you, six ninety-nine. I think I'm paying right now because I have a, a big plan in there. I got the no ads plan because that's what I had. I think I've had that plan prior to when they even announced the ad plans a couple years ago. And then I have one with the most screens because I got a TV in my bedroom. Tommy's got a TV. We got a living room TV, right? So you can do three or four, whatever it is. I think I'm paying like 24 something for my Netflix subscription. And I said to myself, wait a second, man. That's a lot of extra money if I can just pay $6.99 a month and maybe we watch a few ads. Advertising. It's all going back to the same exact plan, folks, right? I think about in terms of network television right it was always free it's ad supported that's the way you make the most money you think about a product like fa facebook do you know how much money yes we do generally facebook makes per user on advertising way more money than you could ever make charging a customer for their own service to sign up for etc and yeah you're talking about big numbers there but 699 man the ads are going to do everything you talk about network television i think about i signed up recently and for Peacock, and I've talked about this recently, I got a year of Peacock, and this is in somewhere like April, May, June, something like that, I think, for $29, I think. I got a year of Peacock for the same exact cost of what I'm paying for Netflix right now. And do you know why, folks? Because they want to sell me advertising, okay? They'd probably give it away for free because they want to sell the advertising, especially a network like NBC that comes with it. Now, the cool part about that when I signed up for Peacock is that I said to myself, it was prior to the Olympics, so I knew I was going to get the Olympics. All right, I think I signed up. You know when I signed up? I signed up right around the Kentucky Derby, I think, because I said to myself, okay, I'm going to get the Kentucky Derby. I'm going to get the Olympics. I'm going to get Oppenheimer, which was available at that time on Peacock as well. I watched that. I'm going to get football, which is on NBC as well, and I got it all for $30. But you know what? They get to serve ads. Do you know what they probably benefited from having my viewing on Peacock during the Olympics, etc.? So that ad-supported tier, man, it is a big one. But, yeah, they're talking about they got live going on in there, etc. Yeah, it is a big one, folks. We're going to talk a little bit more about this even when we get back. Well, let's jump into it. There's your Netflix shares trading at 734. We got 15 minutes to go until the opening bell. Markets on pace for the sixth consecutive positive week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk a little Netflix. Procter & Gamble out as well. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets continuing to climb. s and is now up about 18 points, trading at 59.04. And you see the small creep, the slow creep that we've had, about 25 points higher from where we were at about 8.30 p.m. Eastern time last night. You talk about where we are overseas right now. You got Europe. You get the DAX up about a quarter percent, Kakarol up about half a percent, FTSE negative three tenths percent over in Asia. You get the Nikkei barely in the positive right now, Hang Seng up 3.6, Shanghai up 2.9. We check in on two of the catalysts, two of those equities, Pinduoduo up about six dollars. The volatility continuing for the Chinese stocks, Alibaba catching a lift as well from 100 to 103.50. Back to Netflix for a moment. Netflix pushing 734 this morning. You're up by about 46 dollars, and it is intriguing, right? Like we talked about. Yes, it's a mammoth move, but if you're trading options, folks, this thing had a mammoth move. There was a lot of volatility priced into this equity coming into that and you had an expected move of about $36 we're going to come into the open with a move of about $46 we'll see where we go from there but just finishing up the conversation in terms of Netflix I talked about that ad supported when you look at some of the headlines there ad tier members jump 35 percent now percentages on small numbers can be deceiving okay percentages when you're using small numbers can be deceiving Okay, and their ad supported members started in 2022, and the number is just beginning to grow. So it is a much smaller number than what you're dealing with when you talk about the other portion of their subscribers that are non ad supported. But nonetheless, as I talked about, so much money in advertising. Netflix got it. You know, Reed Hastings talked about that they weren't going to do that, and then they saw the writing on the wall, and credit to them. They said they were wrong, they made that change, and now they're pushing out the ad supported networks. And uh, they're growing dramatically, to put it lightly, right? Yes. Staying with 
the streaming networks, and we'll jump to Amazon. So, speaking of live, they're jumping into the live news segment, Amazon. And they're going to have Brian Williams. He's going to be hosting live election night special on Amazon Prime Video. It's intriguing, right? All of these streaming platforms getting more into live. And that is going to be a way to make sure that you're keeping people on the constant. Okay? If you're keeping people on the constant, they can't cancel and come back. And that's going to be imperative when you think about where this market is in terms of streaming and the ability to cancel, come back, cancel, come back, right? You think of uh, programs like Stranger Things, whatever it may be, you could just cancel one service, you go to another service, you watch all the items you want there, you cancel that service, you go back to Netflix, you catch up with all the programs you like there. That's not going to be the case because they're getting into live, they're going to make sure they keep you there, and Amazon's getting into it with Mr. Brian Williams coming back for a one-night special for election coverage. Can't believe it's happening November 5th. We're almost there, man. Um, but yes, he will be there. So they already offer live, new, live news content from other channels, all right? But it's not the same, because if you know how it works, right? On any of these services now, folks, I encourage you to check it out. If you're still paying for cable TV, okay, please at least check it out. If you have a Roku in your house, okay, if you have Amazon Prime Video, they offer a tremendous amount of live television these days that you have access to completely for free, okay? And this is what they're talking about. Um, Live now from Fox, NBC News Now. These are all free services. I get them in the Roku Live section. I can see them in Amazon Prime. Well, why do they offer that? Ads, period, ads, yeah. Uh, the other thing out there to keep in mind, because I signed up for this during Hurricane Melton, is that the Weather Channel, if you don't have cable television, okay, and you're into, um, let's say, even next storm season, okay, I signed up for it this year. The Weather Channel offers a seven-day free trial. You can stream their services, and it's only two ninety nine a month if you want to continue. The cool part was is they're coming in from Melton. We signed up for the seven-day free trial. We got the Weather Channel. We were checking out Jim Cantori. I think he ended up in Sarasota from Melton. I think he was in Tampa for one of them early on. Uh, but nonetheless, they're going live. They're doing it for the election coverage, and they're out there. Now, what's interesting is Max, right, HBO Max, that's a great service as well. Big fan of HBO, of course. What's cool there is they have CNN. So it is intriguing how you're seeing all of these streaming platforms realizing that live is going to be a component of what they're doing. News is going to be a component of what they're doing. Amazon already has Thursday Night Football as a component of what they're doing. Rapid growth in that industry, to put it lightly, you jump over to Amazon shares today, you're up by about a dollar, trading at 188.21. Now, the other story out there from Amazon, you got to talk about this one, man. This one's an intriguing one. Where are we? Uh, there it is. So, the AWS CEO, that's where Jazzy used to be, right? That's their moneymaker. Quit if you don't want to return to the office. They're not hiding it, man. They want you back. They want you back in January. And uh, they got no shame in their game. Top executives defended the new, well, controversial with the employees, five-day-per-week in-office policy on Thursday, saying those who don't want to support it can leave for another company. Boom. There you go. There's the door. See you later. Um, yeah. So you got the CEO, of Matt Garman. He's the CEO of AWS. Nine out of ten workers is what he said. You think that's the case? Nine out of ten workers that he's spoken with, do you think that's a fair sample size of the workers? I would guess that the workers that he's talking to have a bias that they're more likely to make him feel warm and fuzzy and tell him he's doing the right thing as opposed to a worker standing in there telling him he's crazy and they don't want to come back to work five days a week. It is remarkable when you always see these spins, right? But nonetheless, that's what matters. He's in charge. And guess what? That's the deal. If you don't want to come back to in office five days per week, you can quit. <laughs> yeah. And as he says, I don't mean it in a bad way. We want to be in an environment where we're working together. We want to really, really innovate on interesting products. I have not seen the ability for us to do that when we're not in person. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? There is nothing wrong with that. Everybody's got choices, okay? And that's the beauty of living in a democracy, folks. You got choices. You live in a capital, capitalist society. You have choices, okay? They're making a choice. They're trying to do the best thing they can for their company. They're saying they want you in office. And if that's what they think makes them most competitive, 
then yeah, that's what they want. And that's what they're going to do. And if they can't get good employees at that level, then they'll suffer and they'll recalibrate how they do it. But nonetheless, right now, yeah, they want everybody back in office. All right, let's talk a little bit of Apple and iPhone. China, looking up iPhone 16 sales for 20% in China debut as demand returns. Latest generation outperforms predecessor in the first three weeks. So, so much for uh, all the pain. Let's jump over to Apple shares this morning. There's a lift on that news, man. You're up by almost $3 right now. You were above $236. We're trading at $235.48 for Apple shares. You check out the weekly. And yeah, we're pushing the 237 all-time high. I was just making sure I thought so. There's your all-time high on Apple. We test that area this morning. We're back a bit to 235.45 for Apple shares. All right, folks, we're coming back for the open. We got the S&Ps up 11 points. As I mentioned, these markets, all three of them, S&Ps, Dow, Russell, excuse me, S&Ps, NASDAQ, and Dow, not the Russell. They're literally all six weeks consecutively. We're looking to close out on positive weeks. We're coming back for the opening bell, folks. we got more equities. We're going to talk Procter & Gamble. Some others, don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets open in the new markets in positive territory. S&P's up. Up by about 11 points, trading just at 5,900. NASDAQ 100 in the positive by 85 right now. We jump over those Netflix shares on the open, and they catch a bid. You're up by 8.1%. You talk about it, man, to the upside. 
Remarkably strong numbers, up by $55. I said the expected move in there was about $36. So, yeah, they're crushing it. That is an all-time high, right? I believe all-time highs. All-time highs. Look at that. Way above where we're talking about. You're only at about 700 What is that, three years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago. And you're back. Netflix is back, man. You jump over to Amazon shares this morning, down about two-tenths. We jump over to Apple and the strong Chinese numbers up by 1.3%. Just near the all-time highs at 237, we jump over to Microsoft this morning, up by about two-tenths percent. Google shares, up by a full percentage point. We check in on the the uh, chip maker AI. NVIDIA, up by about seven-tenths percent, pushing that 140 all-time high for NVIDIA shares. And we jump back to some of the equities with their numbers. Procter & Gamble, a little volatility this morning. You're down by about 64 pennies. Wait a second. Trying to figure out on my chart why it's showing Procter & Gamble only down 41 pennies when it looked like it closed yesterday at about 172. And you're trading at 170. Uh, nonetheless, let's get into those Procter & Gamble numbers. Sales slip is the headline there. But holds the line on prices. Weakened Chinese economy in the Middle East dragging on that company as they are an international force, to put it lightly. Yeah. Net sales fell by 1% in the latest quarter compared with the same period a year earlier, right? Net sales falling. Total sales volume was flat in the quarter as declines in beauty and health care offset growth in grooming, fabric, and home care. Many shoppers' household budgets are strained as a result of those price increases we've been dealing with. But guess what? The outlook? They keep their outlook. That's probably what saves them. They expect sales growth between 2 and 4% for the fiscal year 2025. Maintain the profit goals. We see consumers coming into the P&G franchise and trading up. You're going to be trading up to the Procter & Gamble franchise? Yeah, nonetheless, we're slightly in the red for Procter & Gamble this morning. Now, CVS. They got a new CEO. They're out with their numbers. You're down about 7.3%. Let's jump over to CVS, man. So CVS, they got a new CEO. Effective when? Yesterday. Yeah, shares in the pre-market trading. Uh, third quarter results fall below expectations, and they have a new CEO that, yeah, starts as of yesterday. David Joyner has taken over as new CEO, succeeding Karen Lynch, and that starts as of yesterday. Yeah, he's been president of CVS Caremark company's pharmacy benefit manager so they're ramping things up on the pharmacy benefit manager side as he's taken over and yeah they've cut their forecast this year moves it led to a 19 percent decline in the share price this year yeah it's been a tough one you want to talk about a tough one man right you want to go long term kaboom <laughs> now the only thing i'll say is technically i mean at least you got your back against the wall right at least you got your back against the wall when you're in a nice technical formation like this, right? You know if you're right and you know if you're wrong. It's always nice when you have a trading plan. You can figure it out. And, yeah, that's quite a test of the lows we had in, back in 2019. And you're talking about, though, on CVS, you're right where you were 11 years ago. Remarkable, man. But they got a new CEO. Let's we'll see if they can turn it around. Look at Netflix, man. It's just keeping going. Big numbers. We jump over to some of the other streamers. Warner Brothers Discovery. You're basically flat this morning. We talked about Amazon. Market gives it back a bit. S&Ps, they're selling off. We're still positive by three points, but check out the Dow. Dow right now, negative by 141 points. That's about three-tenths percent. We check back in on gold. Gold trading 27.22 right now, up by $15. We make an all-time high at about 8.30 a.m. this morning of 27.32 of that gold contract. All right, we jump around to what else we got going on. Yeah, Tesla. Let's check out Tesla's share price so far on the open. If you're listening to my program, you know my bias. I think there's a lot of risk at this valuation on Tesla. Okay, that's a great way to put it, right? There's a lot of risk at this valuation of Tesla. They are an outstanding company. Elon Musk is an amazing businessman, a visionary of epic proportions, folks. But at this valuation... It's pretty risky with everything going on right now, and you jump over to the headlines, right? So, this news out early this morning, Tesla faces an investigation of, quote-unquote, full self-driving. That should be illegal by itself. Full self-driving. It's not full self-driving, folks, all right? You're presenting um, an unreasonable expectation 
for consumers when in those vehicles by calling it full self-driving. So you have an investigation um, following a series of collisions where full self-driving was in use within 30 seconds of a crash, one where a driver fatally struck a pedestrian. These are going to happen, folks, okay? They're going to happen, and that's where trust is going to be important, and that's where it's going to be interesting to see how a company run by Elon Musk is going to be able to navigate something like that. And they talk about some of the numbers in here in terms of what they're talking about, okay? And this is where it is going to be interesting. Now, they have, I think it was 2.4 million. They say the numbers in here. How many they got? Let's see. Here they are. Yeah, 2.4 million, okay? The preliminary evaluation pertains to a vehicle population of around 2.4 million Tesla EVs on the roads, and it includes everything basically that they've made since then, okay? You're talking about Model S and X vehicles from 2016 to 2024, Model 3 vehicles from 2017 to 2024, Model Y vehicles that start in 2020, and then Cybertruck vehicles produced this year and last, which give drivers the option to use Tesla's full self-driving. It's not full self-driving, okay? The company now refers to it as partial driving automation system. That just that just doesn't have a ring to it, man, right? And that's why they don't like to call it that. Nonetheless, when you're talking about collisions, okay, the Federal, Federal Vehicle Safety Regulator tracks collisions involving the use of automakers' advanced driver assistance systems, like Tesla's autopilot or full self-driving. As of the beginning of this month, they have tracked about 1,400 incidents in which Tesla's driver assistance systems were engaged within 30 seconds of a collision. Now, here's what I'll say, folks. You got 2.4 million vehicles on the road, okay? Is 1,400 crashes a lot of crashes for 2.4 million vehicles? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, though, it's real world. You got 31 resulting in fatalities, okay? And there's a number of instances. But what they're looking at is, um, can this thing fight through certain instances? Oh, what did I hear there? Thank you. Um, can, it, can it fight through reduced roadway visibility conditions? But this is going to be the problem, folks. It's kind of like the last mile of delivery. You can be okay on 95% of the roads. But that doesn't matter if on 5% of the roads you're in, unable to operate and cause a crash, right? You need to almost be at 100%. You, you'd be amazed at how many computations the human brain is able to process and the nuances of those details. And if it can't process things like fog, rain, etc., you're in a problem, man, to put it lightly, right? You're talking about fog, glaring sun, or other reduced roadway visibility conditions. This is when crashes usually do occur. All right, so it's going to be interesting to see how this comes out. But keep it in mind, because there's going to be that level of trust that is necessary. And it's very difficult to imagine trusting a Tesla vehicle on its own plowing through traffic. We're going to find out. Nonetheless, we jump over. Tesla shares this morning, down 50 pennies. We'll be right back, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. 
Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. S&Ps, we're up by 10 again. We're trading at 58.96, as I mentioned, on a weekly basis, right? You put these charts on a weekly basis, man. We're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six straight weeks to the upside from that 5,400. We're talking about 5,900, 500 points in the last six weeks. This S&P on pace as of today right now. You jump over to the, excuse me, NASDAQ 100, similar deal, man. One, two, three, four, five, six straight weeks. And you're talking about from 18.3 to 20,004. 2100 points to the upside from that pullback to the beginning of September and the excuse me the Dow excuse me that might be three depending on how the futures sometimes calibrate that's a pretty close one there but nonetheless we're talking about the Dow basically 3300 points from that low that we started the week of September 9th to the upside there when you take a look at the Russell a little bit of a different story right on a weekly basis you got a couple reds in there the Russell underperforming versus the rest of the market not even at all-time highs but pretty close you take out that one tail on november of 2021 and you got the russell pushing all-time highs right now okay but yes those all-time highs correlate to where you were back in 2021 bitcoin continuing to catch a bid right now you're up by fourteen hundred dollars two percent sixty eight thousand two ninety crude continuing to drop we just got a 68 price handle on crude we're trading at 69.25 right now and gold 2726 all time highs and yeah friday action in gold as we know we will see where this market goes notes and bonds a little bit of higher price lower yield coming at you and we're sitting on a yield right now of about 4.08 the yield on that tenure i gotta laugh folks because you're right Dan. do i got a bias i got a bias man um but we all got biases you got to have a bias in the market folks okay and my bias is to the negative side on Tesla. But what is remarkable is, right, and I look at it, ask yourself these types of questions because everybody is going to be asking yourself these types of questions. Are you jumping in that Tesla robo-taxi early on? What's going to happen when the first stories start to come out, unfortunately, of pretty rough accidents? You know, the, the roadways are, are very difficult, folks. And what's going to happen is, okay, is that you're going to have self-driving Robo taxis on the road. You're going to have Waymos, right? You're going to have Teslas, but you're still going to have humans on the road. Okay, so at the time that, and there is probably going, to, it's going to be a matter of when, not if. Okay, everything is going to be self-driving. The future is going to be something like we've all seen in sci-fi movies, right? Where you jump in the car, it's self-driving. You don't do any anything. They're all self-driving, and if they're all operating on that level, you can make the theoretical case that everything is safe, but to bring it back, what's going to happen is in the beginning of this, even if the full self-driving is perfect, right? Imagine it's perfect. Imagine they nail it. They nail it. The computer is perfect. They're watching everything. They're, they're making a million computations a second, probably even more than that, okay? You still got humans on the road that can just plow into you 
on a self drive. So there's going to be accidents, and you're going to have to have a level of trust in these vehicles, and that's going to be a very high bar because unfortunately, we like control. Okay, that's why people get nervous on airplanes. Airplanes are safer than cars, but you don't have any control. So there's going to be this huge barrier that people have to uh, make a multi-generational shift change to jumping in a vehicle that is a dangerous proposition that could result in deadly implications if it goes wrong, as it does many times a day, unfortunately, okay? And it's going to happen. And so you're going to have to have that level of trust. And I just I can't see how that plays out right now with Tesla in my own head. I'm not jumping into that robo taxi, man. I'm going to let that play out. I'm going to make sure that it can handle fog and sun glare. OK, all these conditions that pop up every single day everywhere. So just listen to that one in your own head and think about what it's going to take to jump into those self-driving vehicles. Waymo included. All right. I want to see Waymo on the highway. I want to see how Waymo does in fog, in rain, all this stuff happens, all right? And unfortunately, there are going to be accidents that occur, and it's going to be something that we have to be able to explain, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, it, you know, but the, the difference is control, right? And the difference is control. And Dan, you know, and the Tigers are saying, um, you got, you got, you know, people being irresponsible, for lack of a better term, on the roads everywhere, right? We all see them texting, eating, just not paying attention. That's going to continue to happen with self-driving vehicles, so it's not going to be something where it's perfect. It can't be where we are. So just be aware. It's, it's, it's a very difficult task. It's going to take nuance to convince the public to trust, and that's a tough one right now for where Tesla is when you talk about trust because everything is an over-promise and an under-deliver recently. Doesn't mean it's not a great car company. Doesn't mean they haven't changed the world for the better. Got to separate the two, okay? We're talking about valuations. Would I love to buy Tesla at a smaller valuation? Probably. Very difficult to the valuation they're at in my head. All right, let's see what else we got going on in terms of companies. Let's see where Netflix is trading. Following their strong earnings. There you go. It's not stopping. Yeah, they like this number, man. Talk about it. Up by 10%. 10%. What are we talking about? $324 billion company right now for Netflix shares. You jump over to Procter & Gamble. <laughs> there you go. Got to love it. Uh, Procter & Gamble. Down by about a buck 36 right now on their numbers. You jump over to CVS. They got a new CEO. As of yesterday, CVS down about 7.3% right now. We jump over to Apple on their strong numbers in China. Up by a percentage point. But they give back some of those gains. You're trading at 234. Right near the all-time highs for Apple of 237.49. For Apple shares this morning. We check out the other big dogs from Microsoft, up a quarter percent right now. You jump over to Google, up about three quarters, and we got to keep our eyes on NVIDIA shares, up by about seven tenths. Now, you talk about OpenAI, you talk about Microsoft, and it is intriguing. Is this the one? There it is. So, is this the one from today? Wait a second. Yes, it is. Okay. It's amazing how all this stuff isn't even figured out, and they're going to be battling, man, when you talk about where they are. Um, so you have Microsoft and OpenAI. One of them has hired Goldman. The other one's hired Morgan Stanley. And they're trying to figure out when you invest in a nonprofit and that nonprofit turns into a for-profit company, how much equity do you have? You talk about a battle, man, because this company, what's it worth now? $167, $157 billion, right? Yeah. $14 billion investment is what Microsoft has put in there. You got Microsoft is working with Morgan Stanley. OpenAI, working with Goldman Sachs, they get the two big dogs, and they're trying to figure out, in addition to how big, big of a piece of the egg company it's going to own, they have to figure out what governance rights it's going to have. They have to figure out everything. It is unusual for nonprofits to convert to for-profit companies, probably for tax purposes, right? Um, particularly so for a company of that size and value. I would say so. Microsoft and other investors and employees currently own rights to future profits generated by a for-profit subsidiary, okay? Their returns are capped based in part on what they were issued, these par profit participant units. They've invested almost $14 billion since 2019. That's including its recent round. They go over all the numbers here, but yeah, they're trying to figure it out, man. Investors in OpenAI's latest round, you got NVIDIA in there, okay? Thrive Capital, SoftBank, receive debt that will convert to a set amount of equity when they become a for-profit company. 
That's not figured out from Microsoft yet. So you're going to see this play out. That could influence Microsoft to a degree. All right. And they're probably going to have a big chunk of that company when it goes to that for profit. All right, S&P is giving it back a bit. We're uh, positive by four. Stay tuned, folks. We'll finish up the program. We'll take a look at some other equities. It's Friday Action Gold Hire. S&P is near record territory. We're coming right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, folks, S&P's up by 8. You got the NASDAQ up by 112 right now. And the Dow in negative territory off 194. And, yeah, we keep our eye on Netflix. Can't help. Trading up about 10%. $66. We're at 754. And you're talking about all-time highs well above where we were in 2021. And that is quite an extension. You put this thing on a daily, right? And, yeah, as I talked about, man, you're going to get a gap. But boy, it's taking out everything. You slide lower for five days, and boom, just like that, we're at 753 for the price of Netflix shares. Procter & Gamble, basically flat down 7 tenths percent on their numbers right now, and CVS with a little volatility to the downside, off by 6.5 percent. Disney shares trading down about 0.5 percent, talking about streamers right now, $96, as they claw back some of the volatility and losses having to do with whether it was Disney closures, et cetera, across the board. And, yeah, we keep our eye on Apple, on the strong numbers they had out of China, up by 1.4% for Apple shares, basically pushing all-time highs this morning for Apple shares. We check back in on that dollar. 
back to a short-term time frame. We test basically the lows where we opened yesterday at about 103.50. We're slightly up uh, off that number, 103.58 for the dollar. And, of course, you got to talk about gold, man. 27.30, gold, never before today. Has anybody been able to say that gold priced in U.S. dollars trading at twenty seven hundred and thirty dollars, twenty seven thirty, um, relentlessly strong to the upside on that gold contract, and especially appreciative of the price at the pumps right now, sixty nine seventeen. You gotta love that, man. We check back in on those Tesla shares; they're flat at two twenty one right now, relentlessly to the upside. And how about Nvidia, man? Up by eight tenths percent. So much for those ASML numbers. Um, they're the only one punished, which is remarkable, right? Now, Taiwan Semi, they saved the market, you could say, on yesterday. They give back some of those gains this morning. I mean, you're a solid $10 off those highs of yesterday. But, boy, so much for ASML driving this market lower. Taiwan Semi, they saved that market. And, yeah, we got the markets higher, and you get the S&Ps up by 8. Folks, thanks so much for kicking off your Friday right here with TFNN. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's in the Tiger's Den. I see him. He's ready. He's getting his screen ready. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour, folks. We got our man T. Steve Rhodes coming up after that with the Trader's Edge. Larry Pezzavento. Jacob's going to be holding down the fort for my dad today at 3 o'clock. Have a great one.